Hello everybody, so this is going to be our fourth video of this series of Technology OSP in Viva. And in this video, we are going to talk about this picture right over here. Okay, so I can see that the eyelashes are really greasy. Okay, can you see these are extremely greasy. There is some kind of oily material um, um, deposited on the eyelashes. They are it, it feels like that they are actually lubricated with some kind of greasy material, some kind of oil. Okay, and I can see some kind of flakes. Um, um, feels like that this is dandruff, and uh, but I cannot see any kind of bleeding ulcer. And um, yeah, I cannot see any kind of bleeding ulcer. Okay, so lashes are greasy and um, there is deposition of flakes. So let's discuss what this is actually. Okay, so define the picture greasy eyelashes. Okay, these coalition of epidermis, dandruff like material is deposited, flakes, no bleeding ulcer on removal. Okay, don't say this because you are defining the picture. So they, they, they didn't ask you. Um, for pathogenesis. If they ask for the pathogenesis, then you have to tell the this thing. There's desquamation of epidermis and that that thing is deposited as flakes, okay? So no bleeding also. An eyelid margin is animators and shows erythema. Okay, some of some at some point you can see erythema like this and yeah but it's animators right it is animators and um, okay erythema is not that much prominent but edema is okay so what are your dds when you see a picture of this kind um say that this is squamous blephritis there is anterior non -inf okay squamous blephritis is also known as anterior non-infective or seborrheic blephritis okay so because we cannot say conjunctivitis over here because conjunctiva is not shown and um, so there is only one dd okay so etiology this condition is associated with seborrheic dermatitis so people who have seborrheic dermatitis are prone to get this thing it is associated with acne rosacea and atopic dermatitis so what happens when um Obviously, dermatitis is a is an inflammatory condition of the skin. When this affects your eyelid, so in the eyelid you have glands of size. Glands of size secrete abnormal excessive neutral lipids, okay, which are then split by carini bacterium acne into irritating fatty acids. So people have people who have um, acne rosacea. So um, if um, obviously when, when the people have acne rosacea, there will be inflammation of the skin and eyelashes as well. Sorry, eyelid as well. And Zeiss, uh, glands of Zeiss will start secreting um, abnormally neutral lipids, which are then converted to this organism, carani bacterium acne into irritating fatty acids. Okay. So what kind of treatment options do we have? We have, um, obviously, you have to treat the cause. Okay, you have to treat seborrheic dermatitis, acne rosacea, and atopic dermatitis. Okay, then this condition will be subsided, obviously. Okay, and other than that, you can ask the patient. This is very important. You you must ask the patient um, maintain the eyelid hygiene. Okay, and then give them some topical antibiotics and steroids, and then obviously treat seborrheic dermatitis with selenium um, sulfide shampoo. Okay, so this is important. This point is over here. This point over here is very important. So, what kind of complications a person can get? So, to know the complication, you have to um, watch the previous video, and uh, the complications are same as those of ulcerative blephritis. So, I hope you understood this well. If you have any kind of questions, write them down in the comment section. I'll answer there. And kindly subscribe to the channel because it motivates me to make more of such videos. And have a great day. Best of luck.